Hi, this is Code Galboy here, and I want to provide some advice here uh, from the experience I've had in the last seven years of using table partitioning. And I want to start with the table partition function itself. So you'll notice here I have a partition function that's basically partitioned by year. And I find that in almost all the systems that I've worked with, whether it's a uh, uh, purchasing, you know, purchasing items or orders or sales orders or um, customers registering or flight information um, or healthcare records um, or patient visits. What is usually the case is that th there is some concept of data aging, meaning that data that is six months old or a year old is usually more frequently accessed than data that is two years old, three years old, or 10 years old. So the more relevant data is actually the more current data. And lots of times I find that using that logic or using that observation, um, you wanna really separate your data by year. Or uh, in some cases, you might want it to be more frequent, which is quarterly or even uh, semi-annually. Um, so that is uh, one of my first observations. Now, uh, the first time I've used table partitioning, I was a little bit, uh, I think I was a little bit intimidated because I, I didn't know too much about it and I wasn't sure. Uh, but the reality of it is, it's uh, fairly basic if you keep it simple. So I, I've always kept things simple. I, I try not to create too many different partition functions uh, because based on my uh, application performance, you, you want to start simple. So if you're transitioning to using table partitioning for the first time, just keep it simple, just keep it to one partition scheme and partition function. And in my case, it was uh, this yearly strategy here. So uh, what I did was I just created a partition function, a partition scheme and uh, creating clustered indexes based on year uh, depending on the wh whatever date you choose. Now the date you choose is uh, fairly critical because sometimes it could be a create date, sometimes it could be a modified date, sometimes it could be you know a flight arrival or a patient visit date, you know that type of thing. So that is something that you do want to think through, you know, what type of date you want to use. Um, very often though, in, in my case, it has always been a create date or a modified date, um, simply because that brings up the most current data. But even, even when you've decided on that, that is only sort of on the database end where you're gonna you know, do your strategy on how to separate the data. Um, oftentimes, you still have to work with sort of the application team. And, and the reason for that is uh, the performance gain that you get usually only appears when you provide that partition key. So in my case, the partition key was on order date and providing a date within the query would make things faster. So, so you could see uh, I've set up two identi identical databases, one that's partitioned, this uh, AdventureWorks 2012A, and uh, one that is non-partitioned. So the A is non-partitioned and the B is partitioned. And when I run these two exact queries, the non-partitioned one is 98% of the cost and the partitioned one is 2% of the cost. Uh, but in order to maintain that performance, you have to provide the partition key. So oftentimes you have to work with the report writers or the application designers or the UI designers to create a system that takes advantage of your partition scheme. So uh, the strategy that I've used for the user interface, for example, is I would allow a user to pick whatever date they want, but the date range has to be a 12 month span. So what I'm allowing the user to do is, the user can look back 20 years of data, but they could only do it 12 months at a time. Uh, you know, whether the 
whether the uh, 12 months is from August of this year to August of the previous year or um, you know January of this year to December of last year um, you know keeping it a 12 month span so so why am I doing that the, the reason why I'm doing that is uh, because that only crosses a boundary of two partitions so so that allows me to predictably uh, sort of predict the worst case performance that I would have on a per query that it'll, it is only ever searching through two partitions versus uh, in my case here where I've separated the data by um, every year for 17 years I have 17 partitions and you'll see here uh, for example if I do a query on the partitions table I have 17 partitions on this table uh, but I'm so what I'm doing here by you know enforcing this on the UI or enforcing this in the report writers is to actually um, restrict it to part searching through or worst case if it has to scan through these partitions it's only scanning two partitions and uh, if you're transitioning from a non-partition scheme to a partition scheme, you already sort of have an idea of your worst case scenario. Uh, you know, whether, whether your table was 10 million rows and all of a sudden now your query is taking one minute or two minutes to return. So, so you know now that if you actually partition that data into smaller chunks the, and restricted the query to only access two partitions at a time uh, you know you you now have a benchmark or a predictable way of uh, gauging performance uh, the worst case performance in your application so that is one strategy that I've used in the past uh, fairly frequently um, and the other one is um, I'm going to talk about the indexes so, so you'll notice here when I query on the index, or actually let, let me do that. Let, let me run this query again and actually do query on the index right here. So I'm querying on the indexes here, and you'll notice there's actually two sets of indexes here. This one, you'll notice, spans the 17 partitions. So this is the index that I've defined here, where it's the normal index statement, but it also gives the partition scheme, which allows me to basically create the index that spans across each partition. So, so you'll see uh, in the first partition here, this is the year 2005, there's only 34,000 rows. The second partition for two, year 2006 have 1.6 million rows. This has 3.7 million rows and so on and so forth. Um, so this is a little bit different than these indexes that I have, which still has the 40 million rows. So um, there are cases where you might want the index to, to span across the partitions. Um, so, but in most cases I find that, especially with data that has aged, uh, this, this uh, basically partitioned aligned index is a little bit more advantageous. So keep that in mind as you're creating these table partition indexes, you know, whether you want it to span across the partitions and basically have the aggregate of the partitions or whether you want each to have its individual. Now, now when you have the individual indexes the advantage of that so so this here is my year 2015 partition this 3.44 million rows here so what is good about that is when I rebuild this index I could specify just rebuilding this index for this partition uh, which saves a lot of time compared to uh, you know not requiring having to build the indexes for the old data because uh, more frequently than not it probably hasn't changed um, so that is another thing you want to do is uh, think about that um, and one thing that I 
one one thing that I haven't done that I've uh, so when I switch this scheme is having to purge data. We we've all uh, I think at some point or another pondered purging data. Well, uh, the good thing about the table partitioning is when it comes to doing that, now you could do it by uh, the partition. So so I could remove this um, you know 2005 partition fairly easily without having to affect the other ones. Um, so in, in the old days, we, we would just create delete statements, <laughs> um, you know, and now you're, you're sort of rotating the partitions. So um, where, where data that hasn't, hasn't been accessed, you know, for a really long time, you just simply don't need. Uh, so, but in any case, I, I hope this uh, simplifies a lot of the things that were on your mind uh, when you're trying to implement this. Um, I, I would say this is like me. Just keep it simple. Uh, you've your system has survived for this long without table partitioning, and now that you're able to uh, use table partitioning, it you know it, it really should you really should have some sense now of how the system would perform uh, based on your previous ex experience with the system. So uh, just keep things simple. Uh, this is the approach that I've used, and I hope this helps, and thank you for watching.